Hello class, I'm here to talk about chapter 6, the normal distribution. Before we jump into the problems, I want to just uh, kind of give you uh, the basics of the subject. Such is such an um, since it's such an important uh, subject in the statistics and many other uh, fields of science. Uh, right here, as you can see, the normal or the normal distribution, a continuous distribution, is the most important of all dis the distributions. It is widely used and even more widely abused. Its graph is bell shape, which we're gonna be um, looking into it when we get into your uh, homework, which I have copied this from your textbook. Um, you see the bell curve in almost all disciplines. Some of these include psychology, business, economics, science, nursing, and of course, mathematics. Uh, some of your instructors may use the normal distribution to help determine your grade. Um, and you can read the rest on your own. So the standard normal distribution is a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of one and it's called the bell curve. So always remember that, that the normal distribution is determined as a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Uh, with time, you're gonna understand by working the problems. What I want you to look here, if you remember from chapter five that I just showed you, this is denoting a normal distribution the x, the variance, the distribution, is normal. And your left side is always going to be your mean, this, the mu sign, symbol. And then the standard deviation, sigma, it would for, like I just said, the right side, standard deviation. Uh, there's a normal distribution. In this case, in this uh, example right here, is assuming uh, a whole population, not just a sample. If it was just a sample in the place of the um, new, you would see an X bar, and in the place of the sigma, you would see a, a small S for standard deviation. Okay, it says right here, gives you a, a formula for the probability density function for you to not memorize it. So we're gonna be working through the problems and it's gonna make more sense. Um, another thing that I want you to look uh, on your textbook to pay close attention, it says the standard normal distribution. It's a distribution of standardized values called z-scores. Okay, so right here on your um, sigmas, this is the mean. This is, let me make it a little bigger for you. One is standard deviation above the mean, two standard deviations above the mean, three standard deviations above the mean, or you can also call it as the z-scores that you're gonna be calculating uh, along these lines. Here, it's gonna be one standard deviation below the mean, two standard deviations below the mean, three standard deviations below the mean. Uh, or you can also call to the left of the mean or to the right of the mean, if positive to the right, if negative to the left. Um, if you wonder uh, why is this any important, well, once we keep going and we get to chapter seven, you're gonna learn that most of distributions, um, they tend to, many of many values follow, or most of values follow. We go from 410 to six foot two, six feet two. Okay. you are, I mean, as a normal distribution, you would have most of your values in the center, in the middle, or actually your values are usually going to fall within three standard deviations from the mean, either three standard deviations above the mean or three standard deviations below the mean. You really, you're going to have some outliers like right here but the most amount of people in this case, the heights, is gonna be right in the middle. 
and that's what we're going to be proving uh, with your problems and with this concept with the, the normal distribution, which you have seen also um, another one that I can show you. You have seen, for example, when doing a histogram, the more information you collect, it tends to focus in the center or the average of values or the mean. And then the other values will fall into three standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations below. The other uh, important part in your book that mentions is the empirical rule. Um, it says that if X is a random variable and has a normal distribution which follows the standard normal distribution with the mean, three standard deviations uh, above and three, st three standard deviations below, um, you're going to know that about 68% of the values lie between minus one standard deviation and one standard deviation, like I just showed you with the heights. Okay, and then about actually it's 68.27, which they don't put it here. Um, and then about 95.44, which here says 95%, will fall between two standard deviations from the mean and and above the mean and two standard deviations below the mean. And then uh, lastly, about 99.72 of the values will uh, lie between three standard deviation above the mean and three standard deviation below the mean. I have also um, put a other right here. So this that I just read it for you. Let me try to make it smaller here. About 68% of the X values lie between minus one and one standard deviation of the mean. Therefore, if you see, you see and then you ask yourself, well, here says 34, because you have to consider that it's 68 divided by two. So 34% fall, falls above the mean and 34% falls below the mean. Right here, you see that about 95% of the values lie between minus two standard deviations and plus two standard deviations of the mean. And then you just, and then you look and you only see 13.5%. Why? Well, you got to do your 95% minus your 68 is 27. And now you're going to divide your 27 by two. You're going to have 13 and a half. So two standard deviations, 13 and a half, above the mean, 13 and a half below the mean, and then lastly, about 99.7% of the values will lie between minus three standard deviation and plus three standard deviations of the mean. Uh, same thing right here, if you have 95% of the values, and you know, right here is telling you, you have the remaining about, about 5%, because it's almost 100, so they are dividing the 5% to and have positive and to and have negative. So you would do the 9972, um, which is the correct, minus the 95.44. You would have about 4.28 if you would be precise, but since they're, um, they're rounding up to 100%, then you would be, that's what the, That's why you're seeing, you're going to see most of actually the bell curves, you're going to see 2.5% and 2.5%. And then once we work the problems, you're going to understand better. Right here is what I copy on your template that I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, let's go back here, some of the examples. So right here, it says, um, for example, if the mean, and let me open Excel so I can work on that. Uh, and then this question right here was assigned to you. Perhaps you're going to find some of the answers on this area right here. So let's just put this problem here on the side, and I'm going to work with you to see if you understand. Okay, so it says right here trying to make it where it fits enough for you to see it. Uh, okay, yeah, this is more than enough. 
So forget this. Let me delete this for now. So for example, if the mean um, of this distribution is equals 5, what you would have this symbol right here. So mean. And then let's just insert the standard deviation. Uh, let's put this one. Sigma. And what else we need? Uh, X and Z is fine. Okay, so it's telling you the mean of this distribution, which is a normal distribution, it's telling you right here. And if not, we must assume normal distribution in order to be able to work these problems. It's 5. And then the standard deviation is 2. And the standard deviation, let me highlight this for you. Uh, okay. And then the standard deviation here in this case is 2. Okay. And then it says the value is the value 11 is telling you is three standard deviations above or to the right of the mean because it's positive. So every time it's positive, it's to the right of the mean of the mean or above the mean. So in this case, if you remember before where I showed you how to calculate the mean and how to calculate the standard deviation and I ask you in a problem, is this, tell me one standard deviation above, one standard deviation below, so far so on. So your formula would be x equals to the mean. And then you would have, in this case, you know is a positive, but if I would ask below, you could have um, plus or minus, and then your sigma, your standard deviation, which I'm going to put in here. That would be your formula. So in this case, I'm telling you the value 11 is three standard deviations above the mean. So for you to confirm this information, you're going to have to do x equals to your standard deviation is 5. Oh, I mean your mean, sorry about that, is 5. And you know it's positive, it's above or to the right of the mean, so positive. And then you know your standard deviation is 2, correct? And I'm asking for three standard deviations above the mean. So three times two. Three standard deviations times two, which is going to be five plus. Now you're going to do, you can do equals five plus uh, three times two. And then you confirm, in this case, the value um, is 11 right here. Okay. Uh, if I would ask you for the actual score, Z score, the Z score tells you how many standard deviations the value is X is above to the right of or below to the left of the mean. So here's one example right below. Suppose we have a normal distribution. Remember the denotation. And remember this is always the mean and this is the standard deviation. Okay, so let's put the mean is 5, and then the standard deviation is uh, 6, and just remember, your distribution is uh, 5, 6. If I need you, if I ask you to denote the distribution, uh, and it's telling you, right, and it repeats with mean 5, with, with a mean 5, and a standard deviation is 6, and suppose that x is 17, so it's asking me for the z-score. In this case, the formula for the z-score is going to be z equals x minus, um, let me make this bigger. It's going to be x minus the mean divided by 2. So z, it's going to be, we know x here. Oh, we got to go back because it says, suppose x equals 17 minus your mean, which is 5, correct? Divided by your standard deviation, which I made a mistake here. That's supposed to be standard deviation. I don't know why I said 2. I'm thinking about the mean. Sorry. 
Okay, therefore, let's do it. Um, 17, we can do 17 minus 5 divided by 6. And then you're going to have 2, which will tell you 2 is a positive value right here. This means that x equals 17 is two standard deviations above or to the right of the mean 5. And the standard deviation is 6. If you would use the same formula as above to confirm that, since you have now determined the z-score, you would do 5 plus 2 times the standard deviation, which would be 17. Okay, and then they keep going, and then they change your value to x equals 1 now. So now they're saying that your x is equals 1. So right here, if you do 1 minus 5 divided by 6 by your standard deviation, you're going to have a negative amount. And in this case, which you can round that to two digits. In this case, you're going to have a negative amount, which is going to be, um, let's go over here. In this case, minus 0 0.67 would be about right here. And the other one, if you have a 2, you would have over here. Okay, and then again, when we work the problems, this is going to make um, more sense. It's a very interesting concept, uh, even though you might not agree with me right now because you're thinking about midterm and homework. Um, like if you work for a restaurant, for example, and uh, you look at the, you just pick the, the value of some uh, of the bills about, I don't know, just pick a random, just, okay, this is another thing to be, they say to be, a sample to be large enough should be at least 30, 30 values, okay? So let's suppose that you get 30 receipts and you list all their values, do the average, and when you calculate the standard deviation and everything, you will notice that most of your values will uh, form a bell curve and you will confirm that uh, you don't everything is on track. You don't have many outliers, unless you know someone orders something completely out of the you know the expected, the normal, exactly out of the expected normal. That's why we call it the normal distribution. I know this might sound confusing, right? Uh, confusing right now, and I sure hope it gets better. In the next video, I'm gonna go over um, the problems or some of the problems at least so you can start working you already have the videos for problem i mean for chapters five